Hello friends subscribe to our channel GDC and press the bell icon for more updates. students welcome to the channel so today in this video we are going to discuss some questions which is very important for your GPAT exam so here we have a first question is that the unit of absorbed dose of radioactive compound is and the options are option A is Becquerel option B is Curie option C is gray and option D is all of the above so which is the unit uh, what is the unit of absorbed dose of radioactive compound and the correct answer is that is a gray so what is actually becquerel uh, becquerel is the si unit derived unit of radioactivity on and one becquerel is defined as the activity of a quantity of radioactivity radioactive material in which one nucleus decays per second where curie is known si unit of radioactivity and it is defined as 1 curie is 3 into 10 to the power 10 here student it is that this decays per second and uh, coming on the uh, correct answer that is gray what is gray gray is the SI derived unit of absorbed dose it is defined as the absorption of 1 joule of such energy by 1 kilogram of matter so option C is the correct answer now moving on the next question that the prokinetic drug which is used as an antimatic and the options are option A is metclopramide, option B is ondansetron, option C is promethazine, option D is haloperidol. So which is the correct answer? The correct answer is metclopramide is the prokinetic drug which is used as antiemetic drug. Here we have just a classification the anticholinergic, hyoscine and dicyclomine, H1 antihistaminic, neuroleptics and prokinetics so that is metclopramide, domperidone, cisapride, mosapride and itopopromide. Itopromide and what are coming on the 5ST3 antagonist that is ondansetron which is used in uh, anti-cancer anti to or uh, stop prevent the to prevent the um, uh, vomiting. So students option A is the correct answer. Try to note down this classification in your new notebook. Now the next question is that which of the following expression is correct in the relation with chromatography column and the options are option A is an EWF is equal to 5.54 option B is 16 and EWF option C is this and option D is this. So which one is the uh, expression which is correct in relation with chromatography column and the options D is the correct answer. So students this will be explained with the help of this that the column efficiency measured by plate number that is n where n is equal to tr uh, by s square tr is the total retention time s is the standard deviation of uh, Gaussian p but s requires accurate determination of point inflection so we use n is equal to 5.54 into tr upon peak width at 50 percent up height square and where large n indicates good column performance should be 10,000 for HPLC and is increased by uh, by increasing the temperature and column length where decrease stationary phase particle size flow rate mobile phase viscosity so option D is the correct answer so now coming on the next question that which of the following is a venodilator and the options are option A is hydralazine, option B is minoxidil, option C is nitroproside, option D is nifedipine. So nitroproside is the venodilator students. So let's discuss with the help of explanation that hydralazine, minoxidil and nifedipine are primarily atriolar dilator whereas nitroproside is the atriolar and venous dilator students write down hydralazine, minoxidil and nifedipine are the atriolar dilator but it also uh, nitroproside is also a venodilator as well as atriolar so option C is the correct answer now moving on the next question or fifth question 
that sting is a problem of suppository which is made with options are option A is theobromum oil, option B is PEG, option C is Mesa Estrium, option D is glycerogelatin. So which is the correct answer? That sting is a problem of suppositories which is made with the polyethylene glycol. Let's discuss with the help of explanation that PEG is used as suppository base. However, due to its hygroscopic nature, when inserted in rectal cavity, it takes up the fluid from the surroundings, mucus, and results in irritation due to dryness of mucus. So this problem is called as actually a sting. So to avoid this sting, PEG based suppositories are dipped in water to saturate before inserting into the rectum. So option B is the correct answer. Now moving on the next question that the phenomena of the passage of pure solvent into solution through a semi permeable membrane is known as and the options are option A is osmosis, option B is diffusion, option C is reverse osmosis, option D is vaporization. So which is the correct answer? The correct answer is osmosis is the passage of pure solvent into solution through a semi permeable membrane. Let's discuss individually that what is osmosis. Osmosis is the passage of pure solvent into a solution through SPM or semi permeable membrane where diffusion is it goes from reasons of higher concentration to lower concentration. This one is diffusion. And where reverse osmosis occurs when the water is moved across the membrane against the concentration gradient that is from lower concentration to higher means this one is the reverse osmosis and this is the diffusion that higher to lower. Now vaporization is of an element or compound is a phase transition from the liquid phase to gas phase. So option A is the correct answer. Now moving on the next question that active constituent of Arjuna options are option A is beta cetoesterol allergic acid gallic acid and chabulic acid option b option c is ketoesterol op and quercetin cur option d is phylambin and gallic acid so which is the correct active constituent of arjuna so the correct answer is that is beta cetoesterol allergic acid is the active constituent of arjuna now moving on the next question that the dna replication takes place during option A is S phase, option B is G2 phase, option C is G1 phase, option D is prophase. So DNA replication takes place during the correct answer is S phase. Let's discuss with the help of explanation students that cell division is a normal physiological process which is taking place in almost all cells in certain circumstances that is of cell injury immune stimulation when cell become old and unhealthy so this are uh, this one this diagram is shows the phases that is the g1 phase s phase g2 phase prophase metaphase anaphase teleplase and this one is next one so students this is the cell cycle try to uh, draw in your notebook so you will not uh, you will not gonna face confusion so what is actually G, G naught phase that it is known as resting phase in this cell it is not and not commit any division means there will not be any division in this cell. So certain combination of chemotherapy is used to stimulate G naught cancer cells to actively dividing cells and this process is called as cell recruitment where G1 phase is called as pre-synthetic phase and the cell is uh, preparing for DNA synthesis and S phase is for DNA replication and synthesis takes place in this. Where G2 phase is it also referred as post-synthetic uh, post and post-mitotic uh, phase and in this phase cells are preparing for the cell division where M phase is called mitotic phase and it consists of prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. So students please note down these uh, terms because sometimes the question may also ask from basic uh, topics. So 
option A is the correct answer. Now the next question is that the IR source, IR light source, options are option A is hollow cathode lamp, option B is glober, option C is tungsten, option D is deuterium. So which is the IR light source? And the correct answer is that is glober. Glober is the IR light source. So here we have just explanation that the hollow cathode lamp is used as a spectral line source that is example for atomic absorption spectrum meters and as a frequency tuner for light sources such as lasers where glober is a silicon carbide road which is electrically treated to use as light source of IR which is asked in the question and tungsten and deuterium lamp are light source from use, uh, UV visible spectroscopy so option B is the correct answer that is global now moving on the next and last question of this video is that diffraction gratings works on basis of and the options are option A is Bragg's law option B is Beer's law option C is Maxwell law option C is Noyes Whitney so actually diffraction of gratings works on basis of and the correct answer is Bragg's law that diffraction of gratings it works on the basis of Bragg's law so what actually Bragg's law that Bragg's law is gives the angles for coherent and incoherent scattering from a crystal lattice and the crystal at certain specific wavelengths and incident angles produce intense peaks of reflected radiation known as Bragg's peaks so diffraction refers to various phenomena which occurs when a wave encounters an obstacle and uh, Beer's law Beer's law is often written in the form of this that A is equal to ABC as a way of summarizing and quantifying the relationship between the absorbance nature of the absorbing chemical and the path length of the solution and the concentration of the solution so this is the Beer's law and the previous one was the Bragg's law don't get confused students so Maxwell law describes how electric field and the magnetic fields are generated and altered by each other by charges and currents so there is no law termed as noise Whitney students so it means noise Whitney is uh, incorrect one so however there is a noise Whitney equation which relates the rate of dissolution it's a topic of sutex of a dissolution of solids to the properties of the uh, solid and the dissolution medium so option A is correct answer means diffraction of gratings related to the Bragg's law so students this is all about this video i hope you like the videos thanks for watching